This episode is brought to you by Hub24, whose purpose is to connect advisors to innovative solutions that create opportunity. They're massive supporters of advisors, in particular those going solo, uh, and they're one of the early players in the managed account space, and, and their epic functionality in that area, as well as their commitment to user experience, has led them to become a market leader in terms of advisor satisfaction. I can speak from personal experience when I say their BDM team are total legends and they're there to help you work through the best solutions for your business. So you can check out more information at hub24.com.au. This episode is also brought to you by Centuria, who are a boutique ultra high performing fund manager. They've won pretty much all the awards there are to win. Uh, They've got a bunch of five star rated funds and they're heavy into technical support for advisors around their products and strategies. On top of that, they're just an awesome group of people and they've got a dedicated team there to support you. And if you haven't already spoken to the guys at Centuria and heard about what they do, do yourself a favor and reach out. We've got Dante DeGori on XY Advisor, second time. You. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, things have changed a bit since your last co-ride. Uh, was that was that back in the day when we were all doing it over laptops? Yeah, laptops, uh, mate, Zoom, early days. Early Dante days. in his office, basically with, with all his sports memorabilia. Don't go, don't go back to like pre number sixty. Is it around about? It's barely even audible. Yeah, just, like, just don't go to Chris Ridd's episode. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this super awesome, powerful executive guy in the finance industry who just completely blow up his uh, interview. It sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to get one again. Yeah, uh, definitely, <laughs> Chris. You're, you're back on soon. <laughs> So Dante, it's been a tough few weeks, months, um, arguably since being the CEO, I guess. Uh, <laughs> years. <laughs> it's oh, financial advice. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well, it's definitely taken a turn this year in particular. So months, I mean, uh, I think the last uh, couple of years have been a walk in the park compared to this. But yeah, with uh, you know so much happening, obviously so much attention in the press for financial planning. Someone once told me. You know, any press is good press, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I don't yeah. know if this is a press. I think there's a lot of businesses that are disagreeing with that <laughs> yeah, statement I at the moment. So. I think so. So, um, yeah, so very uh, emotionally charged, very uh, very delicate situation at the moment, but, um, you know, one that we've got to ride through and strongly believe we'll be better for it in the end, but, mm. you know, it's going to be tough. It is tough. Well, mate, before before we dive into that, because obviously there's, there's a lot there, um, we'd like to know a little bit about your background. Typically, we like to kick off our podcast with something about yourself, or um, just, you know, because a lot of people know you as, you know, Dante, the, the CEO of the FBA, yeah. you know, like what what's something that, um, that you know, uh, we know that you like football, but uh, do you have a story of uh, like, you know, getting kicked in the shins way too hard and running around like a girl or something? Like, <laughs> give it, give, well, give his, something. Teammates, his teammates have told me that he does that all the time. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, well, uh, I mean, it does relate to football and school, but um, you know, playing football in, uh, at school, and uh, we were um, our school backed onto residential property and playing playing football in sort of the uh, the basketball courts, kicking it around and stuff like that. And um, I've knocked it over the uh, the fence. Uh-huh. So you knock over the fence, you got to go get it. Mm-hmm. You do leave the school property doing that, so you got to wait for the teachers not to be looking around, and you can't be caught. <laughs> Cool. They all went to a Catholic school, so pretty strict Ooh, stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway, I jump over the fence. I think, yeah, all good. Clear with the teachers. Go and get the ball. The backyard's empty. No one seems to be home, so that's good. And, you know, neighbours aren't getting upset. I grab the ball, kick it over, and everyone's carrying on. So I've got to get back over the fence. The next thing, two German shepherds start running out after <laughs> oh, me. And I've gone, damn. what the? And so it's one of those six-foot fences, and I've literally dived over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, and the dog grabbed me on the ankle, so I've been bitten. No but I, way. I still made it over the end. I've, I've rolled over the fence. I've got this bite mark. I'm like in pain. <laughs> <coughs> all, all my mates are like, going, you've got to get up. You've got it. The teachers don't know. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I've, I've, I've limped on for the rest of the day with this bike mark, get home. And then my parents take me to the, you know, to the doctors to get a tetanus <laughs> shot and all that type of stuff. I'm in pain. And so it was just, yeah, just terrible. But it was, yeah. It's Mate, that's a good terrifying story. how, uh, how easily that could have ended far worse. Oh yeah. You know, like mm. these dogs came after me and like, I've, I've, I've never dived so high in my life. So. <laughs> Which high <laughs> jump was on like later it's, that day? Yeah, it seems like a metaphor for the mm. Royal Commission for you. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Thanks for that. Classic, Patty. Um, sorry, we're staying in personal stuff in the moment. 
Yes. No. <laughs> so. <laughs> I just had to go there. Yeah, it's too I know. Good. It's too All good. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> so, have you been playing lately? No, unfortunately not. It's probably been uh, two or three years since I've I've played any football. So, um, Matt, well, how old are you now? Um, thirty nine. Okay, so uh, thirty four, and I've just I've had to quit BJJ because I want to clarify I've, what BJJ. is. Oh right? yeah, yeah, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. All <laughs> oh, right. <Because, laughs> uh, yes, yeah, sorry. So, because cracked rib. So, uh, yeah. Just found out yesterday I got to get surgery for a hernia. Oh, wow. Right? From that as well. Yeah, from, from BJJ as well. And, and like, I've got so much nerve damage on the outside of my left knee that I don't think I'll ever feel the skin on my knee again. Uh, like, you've only been doing it for a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, uh, Wrong talk, time of life to start it, talk, I guess so. talk, Yeah, talk about um, just body not keeping up with the sport. Mm. Yeah, it, it, the something happens in your thirties. It just doesn't uh, doesn't work. But yeah. yeah, but I've had I've broken both legs, both ankles. Oh. So I haven't had any knee problems, which has yeah. been good. I've mm. had a lot of mates with knee reconstructions, but um, yeah, it's just been tough. And you know, with a young family now as well, and yeah, work, it's just uh, it's been pretty tough to do. Any, I can't even watch football on TV. Jeez, I'm watching this Thomas the Tank the Engine. Ten, at the the moment. Ten, <laughs> only get the ten minute highlights <laughs> on YouTube. That's yeah, it. pretty much. <laughs> well, who do you go for? Um, in Australia, Sydney FC and nice. uh, in the Italian league, Inter Milan and Liverpool Inter. in the English Premier League. Ah, very yes. cool. Yeah, you got a lot, lot to catch up on during the week, on the weekend. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hell yeah! I'll watch the uh, watch the Champions League final. So it should be good. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yes, yeah. um, yeah, so uh, there's there's obviously a lot going on in in the industry. Um, people have been really vocal on the XY group as of late. Typically, it hasn't been. A bashing forum, like we've lasted four years without it becoming that, and mm. just in the last couple of weeks, it's sort of gotten a bit into it to the point that I had enough people say, "Hey, you, you should really do something about this." So I was like, "Okay, well, we, we, we've got to, we've got to finally make a stand on this because we're not really interested in." Like we, we we it's not a part of our um, agenda. Well, we had a we had a thought process early on, like when we were first starting out, and yeah. when and a similar sort of mindset of. Like a lot of young advisors out there are now going through is like, well, it's like fuck the police sort of thing. It's like all the all the all these institutions and everything. They're all um, having their they're all making these big calls and make, having this influence on the industry. And we're just running our business. What's going on? And we realised that it's sort of like you can complain about it, but it doesn't actually. Yeah, we it doesn't a, actually do anything. Yeah, yeah. We we took it. We took a view that there's enough complaining, so we're just going to not do complaining. Mm. That that we, mm. almost that one thing. We're just like we. We just won't do complaining, and it's it's worked really well. And so it's kind of it was a little bit weird, I guess, because the group's gotten to a point now where we don't know everyone, and and like it's maybe they've come in recently, and mm. and I guess the traditional thing in financial advice is just complain. In, a, in in like as soon as something's wrong, it's like the torches and pitchforks are out. Some of the best complainers I know are financial advisors. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so and so and doing our best to avoid that, it still happened in X Y. Um, and then so yeah, so we've had we're, we're really struck, strict on it now, bringing it back into line. But mate, it's good to it's good to have you here because otherwise it almost looks like you're just some pinata, just everyone's just winding up with a bat, going, "Come on, let me have a go at him." So wrong to say, I feel like a pinata. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it doesn't surprise you. It's uh, look, look, I have to say, I mean, uh, and you know, when you, you talked about the XY forum, I mean, obviously. Um, you know, almost 14,000 members. And so you're always going to have people with different views. Yeah. You know, it's always going to have um, difference of opinion and, and, and some people react to different things, right? So interestingly, though, there has been a lot of, you know, in uh, a lot of feedback and a lot of uh, discussion at the moment. Uh, thankfully, and I have to say uh, quite um, pleasantly, um, that um, we've got a lot of constructive feedback, which cool. has been mm. good too. So, awesome. you know, I think I think you people, had a huge response to your education to the educate to yeah. the education service. So the engagement level is very very high at the moment. I mean, uh, over four thousand people have done a survey now. I can tell you, wow. since I'm in the FPA, people doing surveys, you're lucky to get a few hundred people yeah. doing them. So, so the, the engagement's up there. Um, it's a matter that everyone's concerned about. Um, obviously, the the Royal Commission has created a lot more attention for financial planning. And advisors are, you know, I think um, justifiably concerned about what it all means for them. And mm. so there is a lot of, at least uh, there's a lot of interaction, at least at the FPA, from members about asking questions and obviously, you know, what happened, what's going on um, and what's going to happen next. So, 
you know, yes, people, um, there are serial whingers, I suppose, if mm. you like to say, and there are those. But Absolutely. Minority, but thankfully. But thankfully, yeah. it's a minority. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, if nothing else, the engagement level is really high. So how do we, <laughs> how do we, how Any do we engagement's take it? Any good engagement? <laughs> well, well. well. Well, look, in the sense that people are listening, and I think it's yes. important that, you know, you, um, you know, so any misstep is obviously very much. like I've been uh, working for all these years to get people's attention. <laughs> <laughs> and all I needed was a misquote from a journalist. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that 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 was definitely the one that uh, kicked off the firestorm. And it was like a Sunday bloody night. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm sort of getting ready for bed. It's you know, and and then my phone's blowing up. I'm getting a bunch of messages, texts, and everything. Uh, you know, and half the comments were, "Oh, Dante," and then the other half were, "Well, come on, like let's." It's yeah, it's surely, like the of the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, so, oh. and, and, and thankfully, and then, and then sort of the, the responses came through. And, mate, the fact that you were personally emailing people on a hmm. Sunday bloody night to cover for, for a misquote from a journalist, I my hmm. respect for you hmm. went up a thousandfold, mate. Like, that's not – that's just your family time, yeah. all right? And so the fact that you uh, thought that this was important enough to reach out to advisors, mate, I take my hat off to you. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's – you know, I was as disappointed as anyone. Um, you know, I did uh, – I think I did three or four interviews that, uh, that day, and that was one of them. And – and you, you, you know, you, you always are conscious of the fact that you know you're dealing with the press, and you know you, you know, and you, and you have an interview with someone for maybe half an hour, mm-hmm. and you get you know two words or two sentences in a story, and you don't know. You know, the other disappointing thing for me was the headline of the story, the actual story and the tone of the story as well. And so, you know, you don't know. That was not great. uh, It was not great. And and, and in fact, you know, a number of the interviews that I did um, in for the press that week, and then there was a Friday, I think, two two stories on Friday and then that one on Sunday, they were all negative titles about financial advice. And so, which was disappointing. And, you know, again, you know, we have a PR agency that gives us advice around this and you know obviously with the royal commission stuff um you know we haven't been able to say too much publicly about the royal commission yep. because of the sensitivity of, of, of some course. of the matters but you know the, the advice has been get out you know you've got to get back into the press and we've got to talk to consumers um through the press and the press want to talk about advice so you mm. want to talk about it you want to mm. but you know and you think back in hindsight and you say well did we? Is there anything of value to those stories that is positive? And it, it really isn't. I mean, is it better for you to be in there and versus not be in there? But well, well, the advice is to be question. in there. Is it still yeah, to be a part of the to, conversation? That's right, and try and steer the conversation. Uh, try and you know put in, uh, to try try and put in the positive messages. Um, you know, but again, you, you know, the last thing you want is to have a misquote in there as well. Oh. But but even still, the context of the quote and the discussion is not represented in the article, which is the other mm. disappointing thing. So, I mean, that's one of the things that we, you know, we set up money in life was to try and say, well, we can't control what a journal and the press want to do, right? Absolutely. So their angle was always, you know, it was about advisors being, you know, how to avoid scammers and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah, it was a yeah. negative tone in the Absolutely. first place. But um, so we, the only thing we can do is get advisors who we got members who are writing articles and blogging, and we're posting them up on on Money and Life, and, and we got consumers subscribing. We got awesome. almost ten thousand consumers subscribed to our. That's oh, massive. Wow. To our. And, to and our can any advisor sort of contact Absolute. someone within the? How, 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 if, say if there's someone listening, how how can someone get in on that? Just uh, contact through the FPA. Um, uh, best probably thing to do is go through to our um, marketing team. Mm. Contact the reception. Um, email even email me. Uh, they can do that. Right. But um, just uh, come through fpa at fpa.com.au okay. is, is, the, is the best uh, best cool. contact. Because they're always looking to get more content out there and a oh, lot of the content comes from advisors. Co- content it? is mm. the, you know, you've got to keep the thing turning. It's like very much like what you guys do. You've got to keep going. You can't just, you know, have one, one article in there and rest on that. You've got yeah. to keep going. And there's topical issues all the time um, that uh, consumers want to read about. And, um, you know, and the fact that you've got experts, you've got, all these financial planners who are experts in their field, yeah. why shouldn't they the ones be talking about personal finance matters mm. as opposed to a yeah, journalist absolutely. that isn't qualified? Yeah, to talk who, about who, who gets paid more to create drama? Right. Your words, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, good point. No, yeah, I, absolutely. Well, yeah. that's. That, I mean, that's been the history of media. Like, even if you read titles, right? If you go onto news.com.au, right? Mm. The bastion of amazing uh, journalism that it is. But every single sort of title, it'll be what 10 people hate about sydney oh yeah and then and and then and then and then then, or every reaction every reaction because it's the strongest reaction we have is annoyance 
anger, and the ability to stir that. It, it, it means, I mean, they know it's down to a science now. Oh, yeah. It's not even an art anymore, right? So, mm. um, so yeah, you, you know what? Uh, I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard because they've got the they own that domain of 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 uh, at at scale communication, right? They've got that domain. Thankfully, like um, advisors, you know, it, even a lot of advisors I haven't even heard at this stage have negatively suffered too bad directly yeah i Mm. haven't every advisor that i've spoken to they've been like well i mean it's annoying yeah i think there's been conversations but yeah it's an it because when you're talking to the educated or people that understand what advice is then they sort of get what's Mm. going on they can understand where things can go wrong or it's like anything the people that have never experienced advice it's quite easy to for a telegraph article to come along and sway them to the devil yeah Mm. Well, look, and, and it is, and this is where you know, looking at, looking through the all the uh, the, the forest of bad publicity uh, mm. is that, and you know, I was my comment about any publicity is good publicity. That the fact is that consumers are tuned in to the world of financial planning at the moment, for, yes. and they might be tuned in because of the negative stuff. Um, I think it is important, and and I suppose the reason why um, the advice we got was to be in the media is that you've got to try and educate consumers mm. now. The angle from the journalists was all about, well, how do we try and empower consumers about you know, their rights or what to expect in financial planning and the process and things like that? And so it wasn't a typical article to talk about the value of financial planning and, and mm. all the benefits. They wanted to know how, do, how does a consumer sort of know what to be prepared for when getting advice in mm. terms of not just the fees, which was that's what got hired in that particular article, but the article was more about you know, questions to ask and what to look out for, maybe the red flag. So that was the angle that the uh, journal was going on because consumers, you know, whatever whatever's going on at the moment, the fact is there is data that tells us that 3 million Australians want to go and get advice. They haven't wow. yet got it. Mm. So the three million Australians. This was before the Royal Commission, yeah. but um, but the the three million Australians now it's doing investment. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I should, you know, I, the the thing is that I think this is going to keep growing. Um, yeah. And you think about the budget changes, and we've yeah. had another budget. They always create um, a, a, an environment of uncertainty and complexity, right? Yes. So people do need advice, and the reality is we are going to need advice to navigate through our financial futures and retirement in particular, right? So you're not going to rely on the government purse anymore. Yep. Um, there's all these things happening about, well, you know, especially with aged care and re- post-retirement living. So you need advice and financial planners are the best place, are in the best place. Well, they're the only the ones that can do it. <laughs> only ones that can do it. Absolutely. It got enshrined in law a couple of years ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It kicks off in one Jan this year. So they, need, hey. so they, they that, 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 will, that, that law takes effect. And... They are the only ones that can do it. Um, and, you know, I often say this, that second only to your health is your financial well-being, right? And so financial planning yeah, I agree. is of national importance. I mean, yep. we have a big role to play in ensuring the Australian public are looked after financially. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, part of this is, you know, we need to educate the public about what it is and how it can help. Because people still have, there's still the misconception about what financial planning is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still get... Consumers, uh, I still get even politicians thinking that it's not, that it's stock breaking. Mm. You're just picking stocks or picking an investment. Yeah, mm. um, and asset it's allocation. So much yeah. more than that, and, you know. And this is probably you know if I could, you know, if I go back in time, um, you know, pre GFC, uh, if I was in this role again, I would completely have changed the narrative. Obviously, with hindsight now, but the fact that advisors were linking their value, their value add to the returns. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I'll ride in the GFC yeah, wave. Yeah, um, you know, obviously, Tricky. We, exactly because that's not the value, right? I yeah, mean, no one controls the market and yeah. the returns, and uh, and people and we have for a long time not uh, truly valued the other part of the work that we do, which mm. is the you know the, the financial management of your affairs, the budgeting, yes. the yeah. cash flow, yeah. you know, and how it, it links to your life outcomes. Absolutely, yeah. you know, just having that financial security. Um, and control of yourself. Um, it's not about what return you got and what's the intangible space the of advice. And that's, Perfect. I think that's that's one thing that we've obviously tried to bring into the conversation for advisors is mm-hmm. that because it is it's it's hard for a lot. A lot of advisors are more technically based. They're more. And to go into this intangible space is sometimes a challenge. That's so, why the women are doing so much better these exactly, days. Exactly. Yeah. Because this intangible piece, it's a, guys are looking at it going, but I did five. Percent more than that yeah. guy. Yeah, I saved you this much in tax, and it's it's very yeah, hard yeah. to measure. And when you it's when you're having measure. that mm. conversation, it's like what happened with the GFC. It's mm. all measured by money. Mm. Yeah. And mm. and the GFC arguably was one of the best things for the industry that could have happened in the respect of 
uh, I guess for for some people they got forced to think of the intangible and like what what am I delivering to people besides this return that's going on and this financial outcome? Yeah, uh, the GFC um, and obviously then brought in FOFA and the and and the and also the disconnection. I think one of the other things as well is that we had. You know, especially for the older advisors, the connection or the reliance on the commission income stream model. Yep. Mm. You didn't have to have a customer value proposition, really, right? Mm. Um, uh, and 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 many. I mean, what we our experience was that many also couldn't tell you how much it cost to give advice. Mm. Mm. Now you go post FOFA and you go to a post commission model where it's fee for service. Well, what are you going to charge? How are you going to charge? Well, you need to know what it's going to cost you first, right? Yeah. How much? And so. So this has been a massive learning curve over the last five years for the profession in saying, How much well, does it cost? <laughs> well, <laughs> on, ongoing? Or <laughs> well, interesting. See, this is one of the things here with the data. It's really important. And, and, and the data does tell us that, um, I mean, upfront can vary, but I mean, it's about, I think the upfront on average is about two and a half, between yep. two and five. Yeah, that makes sense. With, uh, and this is investment trends data. And then ongoing, the average is around three and a half is what we're wow. currently charging. Yeah, yeah. Wait, how much does it cost? Oh, how much does it cost? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, that, yeah, I don't have that data. I mean, oh, okay. each, each advisor has to work out what it costs of them in their yeah, business. Yeah, so okay, okay. What I can okay. tell is what they're charging. Right. Um, but uh, the point there is most advice businesses have had to go and work out what it costs to then determine. Yeah, I'd like to know charge. what the average cost. Average cost is, yeah. Of actually, I think, giving um, advice. That'd actually, be cool. Um, I, I, ben did this work with the Fintech report. If mm. I remember correctly, so it actually might be in the report. Yeah, you had a bit of data around it. Yeah, about what it's actually costing. But um, well, when you get yeah. the um, you got Sue Viscovich report that comes out, and uh, that I, re- I remember from some of the articles about it, like it, yeah, that when you got these businesses that are still on the risk um, in commission model, yep. um, and then you've got others that sort of just charge all of it in the all the ongoing. It's just ongoing. Yeah, and that's that's just the got this ongoing retainer it includes everything and yes. And then you've got the modulized options, like. And well, that, got, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're seeing. I think you're seeing a lot of changes in terms of the way people are pricing or having their packages uh, offered, if you like, or different packages. And I think, but I, you know, the, the thing is though, we've had that change, and we're in this environment now. I think that's going to continue to evolve. I think the ongoing, that that sort of relationship piece and how you charge for it and what you charge is going to continue changing. Mm. Yep. For two reasons: one, technology. Mm. And, the, and 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 technology and customer or client wants, if you like, what client needs. Um, but two, and this is probably the bit that people um, aren't going to be appreciative of, is that the focus is from the regulator, from you know, the Royal Commission and others about what you actually are doing. What constitutes valid yeah, it's, ongoing a, it's a really good question. In my personal uh, practice, what I found that the better results I had, the le- the more redundant I became. How awkward of, of a result is that? Now, I guess that's what a lot of professional services, or, or, or even let's not call them professional services, let's call them, um, you know, like, uh, like physiotherapy, for example. Like a good physiotherapist mm. doesn't, like, shouldn't want to see you again, right? Mm. Um, and a financial planner, yeah, it's a really good question. I think there's still a lot to be said around, and and there's there's this is the this is the key space. A lot of my best clients probably didn't need quote unquote an advisor, but they got the best results mm. because they were people who. Uh, uh, they, they, they were diligent people, but the results they got with an advisor were just better than mm. if they if they didn't have an advisor. And the way that I like to put it is I think one of them said to me once, like, uh, uh, Roger Federer still has a tennis coach, right? Like, th- there's no way that 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 the, the coach of Roger Federer is better than him, but they can point out things. It's good to have someone to bounce off accountability. Mm. Oh, shit. Talk about in- intangibles. Accountability is priceless. Like, we can all go do sit-ups. Yeah. If you have someone standing over the top of you saying, give me three more, you'd be like, oh, yes, all right, bloody, here you go. Here's the three more. And and it is an intangible space. So. So it, uh, as 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 the question becomes, what are we doing to charge for advice? Advisors have to get better at uh, nailing down those intangibles and and getting results from those tangibles, mm-hmm. so that people are saying, "Look, um, uh, you, you're offering me uh, discipline. You're offering me a framework. You're like these things are intangible. 
um, not only do advisors need to catch up to this, but definitely the regulators. Mm. The regulators definitely need to understand um, where our value lies. And I think the better that we get at understanding that, the more we can share with the regulators. So that's why these kind of uh, conversations are so important. Well, I was going to say the benchmarking that some advisors do of their mm. clients versus what that cohort would look like mm. without advice. Yeah. I think that that's sort of, that's almost, because then you, because obviously it's an intangible space, but what you have to do is make the intangible tangible. And that's sometimes the heart of it. How do you measure what the benefits are? Yeah. Oh, look, and it's, and, and it's the, the, that is the part that's going to be under the most scrutiny coming going forward. And because we need to be able to demonstrate that. And I think as advisors need to be able to demonstrate to their clients. And then as a group, we need to demonstrate that as an, you know, as a profession about what, what we're doing. But your point is completely right. I mean, what good is a financial plan if it's not implemented or not implemented totally. properly, right? Totally. So, uh, and, 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 and a plan isn't something that is a set and forget. So we know yeah. that. But the question is, how do we create a revenue model that actually works for for that process so that you can hold the client accountable for achieving those goals yes. and the client actually gets gets to do that. Yeah, value for everyone. Guess, exactly. Yeah. So and that's the difficult thing. And and I can tell you now the discussion is getting very I mean it's the problem is that you know they are trying to make it very black and white in that respect and saying, well does your ongoing service include a review? And so the, 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 the sticking point now is, is whether or not you do this review of the client. And if you don't do a review of a client, then they shouldn't be paying for it. Right. Uh, so I suppose if you pull, stretch that out a bit, so what 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 services do you give your client for that ongoing fee? Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously do you deliver all those services? Um, and can the question now I've got, and this is probably a question for you both as well, but I think in general is, is your fee one and everything's built in or is it itemised? So if you don't, if something oh, isn't done, him. because because I, I tell you that the, the question now is that if you if you have a bundled fee, so let, let's go back to that the average ongoing fee, as I said, about three and a half thousand. Yep. If that three and a half thousand includes everything that you do, including the own review, and let's say for some reason you don't deliver one of those services, or the client doesn't want one of those services for that year, mm. um, and they, uh, you know, I, th- I think the expectation is that client should get a refund sure. for what they didn't get, right. Could uh, you actually facilitate that the way you structure your fee? Your well, well, you love a good module. Well, no. you, 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 you are Meccano set <laughs> financial planning. <laughs> I'll give you give me my take on it. So a lot of the like the costs that go into the upfront, like when you do an SOA and everything that goes into the product comparison, all yeah. that sort of flow. Um, I've identified that and broken that up. So the front end is modulized into the areas of advice and you add them together yeah. and that's the advice fee. The ongoing is uh, it's it's tiered and it's wor- it's really structured on where the cost sits, which is the advisor yeah. time. Correct. So when you when it's expected to see this client more, then it's 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 a higher level. Yep. And there's more and you factor in an expectation of more more contact. Yeah. But the, yeah, the bit that you're talking about, which is really interesting, which is making me think about things differently, yep. is like usually you've got this set thing mm. of what's included. And like, I guess they're coming in, they're going, well, you can't be ambiguous about that and say it's included if required. Yeah. They don't want you to do that. And then if you have it as, and then you're forced to make it like as a hard thing, like it's, mm. this is included. Then they're coming in and going, well, so it, awkward. it wasn't hey, necessarily it, required it, by the client. It's it, like, imagine sending additional invoices to your ongoing service client if they, you know, give you a couple of extra calls or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, like because some clients just have yeah. a higher touch, and and I wasn't great. I, I wasn't great at sort of upping their fee. I just had it an all in mm. one, uh, and some people uh, did it were twice a year, and some people were twice a month, mm. and and it was. Um, I think talking to your point around technology, mm. uh, ideally in an ideal world. Um, every single conversation on the phone or in person would be recorded. It would then be automatically converted into mm. text. It would then be stuck on a CRM. Look at your eyes lighting up. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I can see how it can be done. I don't know if I want to put that together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Google's got some uh, te- uh, speech to text thing. Got that, excited yesterday. Yeah, yeah duplex. Oh, wow. Have you seen that? No. no. Oh, mate. Right. Mm, it was okay. pretty much. Oh, Claire, do you want to talk Okay, yep, yeah, please. So uh, my view on the future of the world is humans are no longer necessary. No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not to that extent, but it's, it's, it's getting there. So you've got Google Duplex, which just got released yesterday. Um, and the video was of an AI making a call 
on behalf of the person booking in a hair appointment. And the conversation went something to the effect of ring, ring, hello? Hello? Um, Yeah, I'd really like to book in a hair appointment. Okay, cool. Do you want to come in at 10 a.m.? Is there anything uh, around 11? Let me check. And then the the computer goes, "Mm -hmm." mm-hmm. Right. Oh, damn. And then and then she's like, well, there's something like after 12 o'clock. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll book that in. What's the name? Okay, the client's name is, you know, Jim or whatever it was. And the and then the conversation ends and 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 the person had no idea. Now, there's a little bit that's a little bit creepy that someone was just recorded, spoken to a computer and then just shown across the world. But moving, putting that aside, um, I mean, if if AI can do that. Why can't it say, well, what was your weekly income? Yeah. Oh, totally. I saw that. And I'm like, mm. wow. What, 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 how about, yeah. And then, oh, actually, you don't even need to tell me. I've just scraped your uh, <laughs> your data off your Commonwealth. I was bank. just asking to see if you knew. Be, be, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> because, because, uh, because this, this big data now, uh, it's, it's, it, and I've been told this since university. It's going to be the management of data and how it relates to your personal life that is going to be the key moving forward. It's not the amount of data. And now these computers are going to be able to make sense of all of our data and then talk to us mm. in a way that makes sense to us. I don't you know, know if they can make, I don't know if they can achieve the following um, accountability. I think this intangible space has legs purely based on, 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 What's the gap between humans and technology? Correct. Because are you going to listen to your computer screaming at you, do another push-up? I'm not. What are you going to do? Unless it had like an arm that whacked you. (laughs) (laughs) Which which is so (laughs) cool. Just plug it into the wall. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's an electric shot that comes out. Like, remember how R2-D2 had do his little... More, um, do more push-up, zap, zap. But yeah. probably not. So I think... I think w- I th- and, and hear me out. I think a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to financial advice, I think the better that we educate and everything, I think people are more likely to get advice once they know more than when they know nothing. Because when you know nothing, you're so scary. freaking out. Mm-hmm. You've got this chill down the back of your spine. You've got the sweat, sweaty palms, and you're just in fight or flight. And um, and so if I think I think these these um, technologies are going to, s- to make the most complex things simple for people, get their head around it, then... To the point of, uh, am I going to do another sit-up if a computer tells me? Probably not because I'm not a robot. I'm Mm. still a person. There's going to be a hell of a lot of people that still want to deal with people. Like, we don't need waitresses and waiters anymore, right? A lot of Japanese restaurants just have pushed the button. Mm. But you kind of, you know, the person comes over, there's a bit of banner and whatever, you you throw them a couple bucks. And that's like... Oh, there's definitely a couple of places. If the waitresses weren't there, it wouldn't be the same experience. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Your local cafe, you mean? <laughs> but the, point, uh, the life of a single. I'm going to give AI a little defence. But like, you might say, okay, well, like Bob, Bob's the irregular AI guy that you talk to, and he's he's coming along. Oh, you've you've had a bad week. What's going on here? And you're like, fuck off, Bob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then Bob goes and gets his other AI mate, which is Tim. Now Tim's the hardliner. He's the he's the angry man, and he comes in and he talks really harsh to you and tells you how. Wait, is this a computer program? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So another AI is going to care. I'm still not going to care. Just care? switch it off. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just do, 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 do. I don't know. I was just trying to play a scenario where you had the hardliner. No, that's I, 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 I think people. I think people. I think advisors. But um, the you know with that sort of stuff. Asset management mm. uh, is really easy for something like I mean that's what that's what robo advice is right. Combine that with with Google Duplex. Now you've got way you know intangible, intangible, intangible. It's going to be our forte. Well, I, I think uh, look technology. No one's going to no one disputes the fact technology is going to get better and better and better and all this type of stuff. And it will as human as human beings will adjust and evolve and, and evolve based on what the technology does. But I look at I look at the fitness industry, and I always use this as an example. Now, maybe the technology has moved on beyond this even more so. But, you know, I've done presentations where I've asked advisors in the audience, you know, who wears a Fitbit? You know, some everyone wears a Fitbit, right? Everybody, you know, is doing something, tracking on their phone and all that type of stuff. Now, how many of them um, would actually have some type of plan to determine, well, what what is it that I'm, what's my ultimate goal, right? So I've got a Fitbit. Yeah. It tells me what I'm doing. I'm tracking this, et cetera. But what are you tracking it to? Like, mm. what, where's your final destination? And, and, and 86 if, kilos. I mean, 76 kilos. Well, for you. 
got a while to go. Well, so, I never the fifth, you know. So, so, so even having a basic goal like that, right, as an example, yeah. how do you know how many, like, how do you then go back and say, well, what do I need to do to get there and totally. when do I get there, right? Like, yeah. is it because of the steps or is it because of all the beers I drink? I don't well, know. <laughs> you, you don't know, right? So, so I look at the techno- technology is a great enabler for a lot of these things, but without an actual plan and someone actually, so you got people go and get a, a, a fitness coach or someone like that to yes. draft up a plan. Yes. And then they then they know what they're doing and they can yes. keep track and, and that helps them keep track and be accountable to your point. Yes. But no doubt it's the, it's the it's the you know the fitness coach that they might go back to yep. or they might use once a week that's yep. sort of really keeping them accountable because you might you know like anything else it's sort of something new and exciting you know it's a new year's resolution so you're doing it for the first month and then yep. it slowly trips away and drips that's away, a really good away. point so, yeah the, the data by itself isn't enough absolutely so i think no matter whatever changes it's that human element that we can bring um yeah. uh, to, to to ensuring that people have got a plan. They understand the plan. They know all the steps, and we hold them, hold them accountable to it. Definitely. And maybe that's that. You know, that, that sort of that, you know, financial coach element, which mm. I just think people talk about quite a lot. Yep. But that's really where I think we had the greatest value. And the technology then just helps us do that job even better. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I think we're in total agreement there. Mm. Mm. So, so um, how do you do that coaching bit? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what a lot of people he, will be asking. Is, is that scares <laughs> me when you when you say that because uh, I send people to you these days. So, uh. I think the challenge is, is how do you then, you know, how do you run a business like that? How do you price it? Mm. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And I think that's yeah, the, the business model though. challenge is significant. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard some. I've heard some. Um, he's ben a, does a great job. Yeah, he does, but uh, specifically, um, and I won't, I won't mention them unless they want to come on and talk about it. But they do a really good job. They've actually got a five-year expiry date, so wow. their job is so they sit down and when they talk to clients, they've got this, m- this roadmap. It's a fucking roadmap of right. And here we're going to hit this. 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 And by year five, we want you out of this office. Wow. Now I know, I know, and the, and and you know, uh, just having that framework that isn't open ended, I mean, is going to. It, they know what they're doing. Everyone mm. knows where they're up to. You got your estate plan in there and everything like that. You got you got new behaviors that are getting built over that mm. amount of time. Um, and the facts are, you're going to get a certain percentage, and who knows what that is that stay on. Certain certain percentage yeah. are going to say, actually, thanks. B- but I'm, I'm staying. staying. I need you for yeah. another five more years. Co- correct, yeah. or, or, yeah. Or, or whatever it is. But that that sort of five year um, expiry date to to it, you know you get pillows these days, right? Mm. You buy a pillow, and it's got an expiry date on the pillow. There's there's, there's a lot, and and for health reasons, right? And uh, these people, these great advisors, and they really are. They're killing it. Um, I, I have a five year plan, and when they sit down. They tell that to the client. They mm. show them mm-hmm. where, uh, you know, and yeah. people come in for their their first, say, mid-year journey and they're like, okay, well, that's this is where we are. And, and then, then it's there, reframing. And then, there, and then there, and then there. Well, then after there. that five years, it would be a reframing. It would be a different style of service. Is that sort of? Well, no, no. So or is it just continuous? I think they're the pretty dedicated. Now, they're not five years into their business, so we don't know what it's like when they get there. But Oh, they haven't had to have the revenue drop off yet. Well, yeah, correct. <laughs> oh, but, but then, you know, you're going to only get a certain amount and you're going to be Constantly bringing new yep. people in. Yeah, but that's right. You're not. You're not doing every, it that not, well. not everyone's on the same five year timeline. I mean, mm. they all start at different times. Yeah, correct. So, so. <laughs> like everyone drops <laughs> off at the same day. Yeah, you should definitely not run oh, a business. Dear, okay. <laughs> um, but but I think see, I think that's really appealing because again, you know, we have to. You know, one of the things we have to do is we have to again appeal to what consumers want and need. And and I think and that 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 in itself, having a roadmap and talking about a five year plan, in itself. Um, demystifies what financial planning is. It's Definitely. not this, you know, I'm just going to tell you what to invest your money and then see you later. Mm, I mean, yeah. and, 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 and a consumer straight away that walks in that becomes a client straight away knows, okay, well, this person's helping me with all these different things. Yep. Mm. Um, and through this, through this five-year period, I'm going to achieve all these different goals. I'm going to make sure that all my financial situation, which then affects my family and my yeah. and my future goals, have been set. Yeah, and it uh, kind and of I'm avoids that, that upfront SOA, which is so overwhelming yeah. as well, right? That you're essentially doing a ten year plan or yeah. five year plan in a bloody SOA. So, uh, yes. so by by rolling it out, you've kind of you're saying, okay, at this point, we and a lot of advisors talk about it. you got the base level of advice, which is you know super insurance and investments, and then you sort of move up as things you know go from there. Mm. 
you can tackle all of that over five years. You can say at year three and six months, uh, we're going to look at, we'll relook at your mortgage or whatever mm-hmm. that is, right? Because by that time you've had it for this amount of time. And, and of course, not everyone's going to fall into the exact same pattern, mm. but pretty cool concept. Yeah. I mean, you also think about, um, you know, just on that point, you sort of think about, well, um, will the future look like where you have clients that are very active that you are literally being the financial coach or the fitness coach mm. for versus those that say you've had that five-year plan, they've met it, and basically if nothing else changes, you keep doing all these new things that you've learned, you know, your behavior and attitude all remains the same. Mm. But you're still, you're still my client. So if something happens or you want to come back, totally. come back. And so then yeah. you have a model for them to so, say, well, you know, it might be whatever, an hourly rate like a or a fixed model, yeah, tra- yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Because I think that's the other thing as well is that I think we we are going to have to unfortunately get to a point where we accept that we will have um, clients who are, for the better word of a term, active in that yep. they're paying us ongoing. And a client base that isn't active, they're not paying for us, but you are their dedicated advisor yeah. if something when they need you. Mm. Uh, and there's always yep. going to be a time in their life that's going to change their situation or impact their financial situation, mm. whatever yep. it might be. Yep. Um, and so as long as they know who to go to when that happens, Correct. then you can help them out. So, um, yeah, so, so I think you know this, this model going forward of – of this ongoing service relationship is going to have to be very much dedicated to those that want and what it is that they're going to get versus those that say, look, you know, I know who my advisor is. I'm not paying them anything ongoing at the moment, um, but when when I need them, I know where to go. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I I, I can definitely Mm. see that happening. Mm. So. Cool. Um, mate, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Is there there anything else that you wanted to cover before we I want to hear what he thinks. Because Dante was talking about, he thinks he knows what's going to happen after nope. the Royal Commission. Oh, oh, I did <laughs> he not had his say. crystal ball out over there. Oh, and yeah. He was, oh, oh, yeah. he was rubbing it. And he's like, oh, it, no, it was a little bit happen. weird. It was a little bit weird. He said it threw sparkles up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's how you become the CEO of the this FBA. Is. You bring your crystal ball <laughs> to the interview. And a little and black the, cat. Yeah. This is how things get misrepresented. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I actually don't know where you got that from. I, I feel like you were trying to lead a conversation there, but you invented an event. So, yes, so yeah. yes, he invented that. Yes, yes correct. So Dante. <laughs> Dante is going to tell us what may happen. I he does not know what um, is going to happen. <laughs> and every other, we'll put an extra long disclaimer about to journalists out there that please don't misquote him and please check in about the, what he All says right, now. All right, so moving, moving on. on from the Royal Commission, um, what, what do you think will uh, advice look like in five years? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. Um, I think a lot of what we've talked about, I think the influence of technology – the role of the financial planner being more as a, as a, as I, a financial coach, or if, for a better word, I don't know, but as a financial coach, I think yep. he's going to play. I think the the advice models uh, and business models are going to significantly change as well. Yep. Um, I I also think, and again, this might be you know, uh, depending on what does come out in terms of more reform, but I think one of the things that I'd like to see is that financial planning isn't directly linked to financial products. Yep. So cool. I really, you know, my, my my vision has been that, and what I always thought financial planning is and, it, and has been, is that it's about the strategy, right, that's put in place. You know, it's actually the plan and, and sticking to that plan. Um, and, you know, this is probably more of a technical issue in terms of the way we are structured in the legislation. But, you yeah. know, we, we are effectively, you as a financial planner, you're providing financial product advice. You know, our, I'd love that to be removed. And cool. then, uh, I just think it's about the strategy we give. Um, you know, products is nothing more than the equipment that you might use to to deliver totally. uh, and to get to the outcome. So I'd love to see that, and whether that's in five years or not, but that, I'd like to see. And then, the, the, as I said, the role of technology, the business model changes, being more customer-centric in terms of, well, rather than us telling consumers what financial planning is and has, how it has to be, you know, this is about how they want to receive it. How do they want to receive the advice? So we're still giving the advice, but the way they want to consume it. Mm. Um, you know, we've I think we've for a long time we've tried to dictate to the public about this is the way it has to be. You have to have this financial plan. It has to be completely holistic, and mm. you know you have to do all these things. But people don't consume their financial needs that way. Um, and I think that's borne out by all the different business models we're seeing now, and obviously the and the fact that technology is coming out to say, well, it can do all these different things. So. I see a different world in five to ten years where um, you still need that human touch, that individual advisor needs to be able to, you know, um, reassure that, that their client about what they're doing and why they're doing it and how they're doing it. 
as, as to use your words, hold them accountable to it. Mm-hmm. But being enabled by you know uh, change in the structure, uh, technology, um, and um, uh, and um, um, and and I suppose just the um, the the general appetite from consumers about needing the advice. I just think you know all this negativity. It's going to be preceded by um, by by good outcomes because whatever happens. Australians need financial planning. Totally. They need advice. Awesome, man. And um, how, how do people get in contact with... Uh, well, let, let's, let's, let's... I sort think of enough wrap. people know your email address. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I guess, I guess <laughs> like, what, what what would you like advisors to do uh, sort of, you know, because there's a lot they can do, right? It, rather than just email you or, or whatever, things like that, unless it's something positive, because that, that, that'd be nice to, to receive one once in a, once yeah, in a while. Can someone just, like, when they listen to this, can they just send him a nice email? And just like, a lovely email. Just be like, thank you, Dante. Yeah. Like, that'd be nice. Just, Look, Every day off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't need that. Don't want that. All I, I, honestly, I, and, and you know, uh, in all sincerity, all you can do and all you should do is just keep servicing your clients. Totally. Run your business. You know, uh, and there's no point having a bad business. You've got to have a good business. Yep. Um, and you've got to keep delivering with your clients because the clients that we do have, there are 2.7 million Australians who currently do get advice. Mm. They're the advocates. They get good totally. advice. They yeah, have a great yeah, experience. Yeah. They're going to tell someone. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we need, we just need to keep doing the great work that we're doing and keep doing it. Um, slow and steady, um, that message will keep going out. Um, so concentrate on your clients, concentrate on giving great advice because that's the only thing you can control and that's what you should do. So... Awesome, mate. Thanks so much for coming on. Cheers. No, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. it. Thanks very much, boys.